there we go. The A36 is on our way to our new home, and we're off to go pick up our new airplane. Let's go for a ride. And my new plane is a 1966 V-35 Bonanza. Now you guys may recognize this airplane. I've actually flown this thing before. It was in a couple of other videos uh, of mine on my cross-country trip. I actually flew this with the previous owner out to Seattle from North Carolina, out to Seattle, and then from Seattle back a couple of years later. So I've got a fair amount of time in this airplane. So when, uh, a few months ago when Steve called me up and said he was looking at selling the airplane, uh, my partners and I decided, hey, we had to, had to jump back into the V-tail world. We wanted to uh, have a V-tail again, and this one just kind of fit the bill for us. All right. Why in the world would you trade an A36 on a V-tail Bonanza? In every practical sense, from the, the bigger baggage door to the little bit higher gross weight to the huge center of gravity envelope, the A36 is, on paper, a superior airplane to, to the V-tail. But there's just something about the look of it you just gotta love. So this panel, uh, obviously the round dials and a, a couple of 430s and the Garmin 375. Uh, the interior definitely is due for an upgrade. Now just like when we bought the A36, we put that uh, G3X panel in it. We're gonna be doing the same thing here. And in fact, I'm going to make a, a video series this time on the upgrade process. Going down to Sarasota, going through what the upgrade uh, quotes project looked like, how we got the quotes, that kind of thing, why we picked the shop that we did. And then hopefully, depending on, on how quickly Sarasota gets us in and out, we'll make a couple of trips down there and, and hopefully do some midpoint uh, videos to show the progress along the way. And obviously, the after upgrade in, uh, in about two months from now, uh, we'll have the aftershots and, and talk through uh, test flying the airplane, picking it up, bringing it home, and, and all that kind of stuff. So that series should be pretty fun. All right, well, you know what? I pre-flighted the airplane. It's time to go fly. All right, everybody, I hope you can hear me. This is my first time recording audio uh, in this plane in a long time. <laughs> and it's a different camera than I used last time, so we'll see how this goes today. Just like with the uh, the G3X before, I've synced through Bluetooth the uh, four flight and uh, our uh, 375. Yeah, I put a short flight in here just from Concord over to Lake Norman, and then I am sending that to the panel. If I go to the panel here, it actually brings it up. I can activate that. So just like the uh, the G3X and everything else before, everything is it does sync together. So that's actually really cool. Now the downside of the way this thing is set up is these two 430s are connected to each other, but it's not connected to this, so you got to double do all the effort. Oh, what is kind of cool is I can put the default nav screen down here and then see the map up there, so it ends up working. It's just it's a little a little weird. Concord Ground, Bonanza 2016 Delta at the south runoff area with information golf. Ready for taxi departure to the northwest, please. Confirm, confirm it's 2016 Delta. Yes, sir, 2016 Delta. As if I've never talked to that airplane. Uh, 16 Delta, runway 2, taxi V Alpha. Runway 2 V Alpha, 16 Delta, thank you, sir. Bonanza 8 Delta Alpha, turn left on Delta and taxi to the ramp V Alpha. As if he's never talked to us before. Maybe I can fly out of here once or twice. Bonanza 2016 Delta, left turn northwest, bound for runway 2, clear for takeoff, traffic, uh, park around the 5 mile final.
things I don't particularly appreciate about having the iPad sitting out here. It's super convenient to get to, which is nice, but it is really in the way to see everything and get to switches and stuff. The oak bar is you know, bad enough, but then you put this on that really compounds it. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to getting to uh, uh, Sarasota and uh, getting the, <laughs> the, panel, the iPad back in the panel where I'm used to it. I'm really not in any hurry today, so I'm at 2300 RPMs and 19 inches of manifold pressure. I'm doing 130 indicated, burning 9.9 .9 gallons an hour at 3,500 feet. I'm actually going to take the iPad down for a minute. I want to show a couple of other things about the plane here. Okay, so one of the one of the things I mentioned is uh, the buddy of mine that uh, we bought the airplane from, he, he just hadn't been flying it for a while. And so now that we're getting into it, flying it again, um, well, we're, we're catching up on some of the gremlins, some of the things that have happened since, uh, just from lack of use. So, but the biggest thing is uh, the vacuum pump just failed on us. Now, you'll notice right now we're running fine. We have uh, plenty of suction over here. That's actually because we have an, aux an auxiliary air uh, pump. So we have auxiliary instrument air. And that was helpful because a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of my partners was coming back from Memphis and the vacuum pump failed in flight on him. And he was able to put the aux pump on, we're good to go. So having the vacuum pump uh, replaced is you know expensive and a pain. So luckily we had a shop date and uh, we'll be getting down to, to have the panel put in. So we're just running off the auxiliary air. But what it gave me a chance to do is kind of come up here today and see what happens when you're flying and the vacuum pump goes out. How does the plane behave? How does the autopilot behave? I thought that'd be kind of interesting to, uh, to kind of check out. So again, we're VFR and I don't need all this stuff today, but uh, it's just a, an interesting practice session. So looking forward to, to seeing how this goes. All right, so I'm gonna shut that pump off and immediately vacuum goes to zero. Now it's interesting, right over here immediately, I don't know if you saw that or not, but the heading bug just went out. We got a heading uh, flag right away. That's kind of interesting. I'm curious if the plane's gonna be able to hold its attitude or not. This is a Century 2000 autopilot and it relies on the horizon for inputs. And you can already feel the plane kind of thinking about this a little bit as we're, we're, doing, our, as we're doing our deal. Now, VTEL Bonanza's yaw already, so I'm not necessarily worried about the yaw and the, and the plane being such a big deal. Uh, we can feel that a little bit. Let's see if I turn the plane. What is she going to do here? I got to tell you, right away, the instrumentation, aside from the heading bug dropping down on here, didn't tell me anything had happened. And so, uh, if I were just flying along, I wouldn't necessarily have noticed the, the suction you know, it had gone out. But you can see now that we're still in level flight. We're still flying along straight level. But it's interesting that the horizon is uh, starting to act up on me, and I'm not actually on my course. That says here that I'd be doing uh, 040, and though I'm tracking, I'm going to track 045. Let's come back to the, to the west here. So clearly the HSI is not showing us the heading we're on anymore. Horizon now looks like I'm doing a massive climb, and if you cross-reference, you'll notice I'm not doing that. Altitude is holding level, VSI is fine, airspeed is not descending, so we're not actually in a climb, but it sure looks like it. My track is 330. This is still showing 330, which is actually pretty good. All right, let's start a turn to the left. But it is interesting, the autopilot is still functioning, and the wings are still level on the airplane. I'm, I'm actually really impressed with that. I was a little bit concerned that with the horizon, not sure what it was doing there, if we were going to be, uh, that the plane would actually hold wings level or not. All right. So I'm going to go direct to Lake Norman, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a procedure in here, and we're going to shoot the RNAV-14 approach. And we're going to go to Z2. Okay, so we're direct to Z2, and if I go to nav mode now, our track is 265. Let's see how this works with the failed horizon. Our altitude's actually come down about 80 feet, 60. Our air, airspeed's doing okay, but that horizon's not looking so good. And now we're losing it. Now we're not, the autopilot's not even holding our course anymore. Let me put it back on heading bug. Okay, track is 276, I need 263, so I'm going to come left a little bit more. 
And the plane is pretty unhappy right now. She's doing wings level, but she's not listening to me anymore. So the autopilot's not, not really appreciating this right now. The horizon has completely failed. So at this point, I think I'd be figuring out that it's time to look at the it's time to look at the vacuum pump and see that oh shoot our vacuum pump has failed. And really the autopilot it's weird, it's turning it's, it'll turn right, but won't turn left. And altitude holds, she's not holding altitude now. Look at this, she's doing look at this here. At this point I'm gonna have to disconnect the autopilot because we're getting into a thousand foot descent, so that is interesting how quickly the instruments, how they worked for a little bit, and then they just were not happy after that. So that was that was really weird. Let's try this one more time. So horizon has failed. Autopilot on, heading, and altitude. Yeah, she's not liking that at all. Okay. Oh, there we go. The uh, with uh, this stuff failed, our autopilot not so happy. So now I got to figure out how to hand fly this airplane, basically off the iPad and off of this. So obviously we have our backup instruments. It's not the end of the world. It's a VFR day, but this is definitely a day when I'm glad that my backup to be my iPad. And now I've got access to the whole system here, and I can use this as an emergency to double check what I'm doing back here. Obviously these are still my primaries, but this makes life. A whole, whole lot better if I'm uh, if I'm in a cloud or, or going someplace. That's a pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, experiment there. I'm gonna go ahead and spin the vacuum pump back up again. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video today. This has been kind of fun to uh, show you a little bit about the the new airplane. Get to a primer a primer on what's going to be happening over the next couple of months with the panel upgrade and everything. Hopefully uh, that'll be a Hopefully that'll be an interesting video for you guys to, to see and enjoy. And uh, actually, I was really interested to see how how the uh, the vacuum pump failure, how slowly that came in. If I wasn't on the autopilot, if I was actually hand flying the airplane when the horizon went kind of wonky like that, that could have been a very very scary uh, you know, situation. So really interesting to to pay attention to your instruments and uh, to be able to cross check and make sure you know what's what's going on all the time. Please like this video if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, until next time, thanks for being my co-pilot. Say guys, everybody.